Gracious Father, I just come into your presence, God, just honored because with all that I am and with all that I'm not and all that you are and all that you've done, what you're doing now, what you're going to do and your plans for this universe, Lord, I'm humbled that you choose to use me in your plan to reach out to your people, to be an encouragement to mothers today, to be in service here at North East Bible Church. I don't take any of that lightly or for granted. Lord, I need to decrease so that you can increase. Let all that I do, all that I say, Lord, be edifying to you so that people see you and not me. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Good morning again. I'm so thankful for this opportunity. I want to take a time to uh, introduce my family. My husband couldn't be with us today, but my mom is here. That's who introduced me to Christ. And my oldest sister, Roxanne, is here. And my two beautiful daughters, Morgan and Chandler. And the person who's really running the house, Caden. <laughs> And Tim is here with us today to celebrate. So I just want to tell y'all when I was uh, when I was little, I used to uh, uh, think that I was gonna be famous. So uh, my mama would send me and my brothers out into the yard to uh, to clean up. So before. I would tell them I'm on my way, but I have to go and take a bath and fix my hair and put on some lip gloss and do all that because I was sure that raking leaves in the backyard, that was going to be my mom. And you never know who's going to be driving by or any of that and when you might get discovered. So when Pastor Rice called me, the Lord had to say, this is not your moment. He is not calling you to take his job. He just asked you to encourage the mother. So I say, okay, God, okay, God, I can do this. I can do this with your power. So, and so I asked God, I was praying, you know, like, what can I say? Because I don't take this time on Sunday morning lightly because so many people, for many people, this is the only time that you get to, a chance to come to worship. So what, Lord, what can I say? How can you use me? And so God woke me up at 3.19 a.m., and with these words, desiring, seeking, and achieving intimacy with God. And so I, I share with you a little bit about how I had all these desires growing up. Because I tell y'all, I want to, you know, one, you know how you remember Christmas? 1974, that was the Christmas of all Christmases. Because when we woke up that morning, there was stuff everywhere, everywhere. Because the Christmases before that, those hadn't been that great. But this year, that was the year I got a baby alive. I got a black baby alive, and I had some balloon furniture, and I had, I had an easy-bake oven. And so I set up house in my room. I set up house, and so I, I had this desire to be this great mom. And, and so since the baby alive couldn't talk, I made my little brother be my other child. So he had to keep eating all these cakes, and he got sick and everything. And so. But I had all these desires and I had these plans, you know, I wanted to have some independence and I wanted to be famous and I had all these thoughts in my head. And so when, I, when the Lord gave me the scripture, I started looking up the, um, the definitions. And so I looked at intimacy first because um, that's what we're saying, we're desiring intimacy with God. And so intimacy is close familiarity or friendship. It's uh, confidence. It's an attachment. Now, when you talk about desiring and seeking and achieving intimacy, and you talk about desiring, that's to strongly wish for, to want something, to pursue something with a passion. And then to seek it, you, want, you attempt to obtain and you want to achieve it and you want to hold on to it. And when you achieve it, it means you've been successful. You've brought about some kind of a you've brought about some kind of change, or you've reached a certain level, or achieved achieved a certain result. So I know uh, a lot of times we have uh, images up here, and I I looked and I searched. How, how can I display intimacy with God? You know, because some of us are visual learners, 
And so I thought about this song. Now, everybody who knows me, you know I can think of a song. You can say two words, and I can think of a song to go with anything. And so that doesn't always play out well in conversations, but I can think of a song. So this time it served me well. But if you would, would you visualize with me for a moment as I say these words to this song? I'm needing. I'm wanting. There is something about you, Lord, that I need to know more of. And when I fall down on my knees, attend my prayer, O oh Lord, and give me more of you. And if it's not too much to ask, I want a deeper relationship with you. I want the oil of God to flow in me through and through. Because here I am on bended knees with outstretched arms crying, Lord, not my will, but your will, less of me and more of you. And I think that's such a powerful picture of intimacy with God. And so I, I started thinking about who displays that. Now, it, you, and if you ever look in your bulletin, you see that uh, we always have a, um, we always have the reading plan for the year. And so early, and, I, and I've been hit or miss with the reading plan in years past, but part of that was because I just really didn't want to read the Old Testament. And so I would skip and then just immediately race to the New Testament. But at the beginning of the year, the Lord gave me a fresh encounter with uh, the New Testament, I mean the Old Testament. And so I started reading about the Exodus and then Caleb and Joseph and, I mean Joshua, I'm sorry, Deborah and David and just going all the way up to David. And what the Lord showed me was how with David, when the Lord anointed him in, uh, in, in 1 Samuel ch chapter 16, when the Lord sent Samuel to anoint David as king, David probably thought a whole bunch of things were going to change then. And so if you look, he did some great things. You know, he conquered Goliath. He was the heart player in, in Saul's court. But then something happened with Saul that changed David's circumstances. And so here we find this man who had been promised that he was going to be king. He's running all through the wilderness trying to convince somebody that I'm not after your job. All of this. And so the whole time he's just crying out to, Lord, out to God. And so as we move forward, we see David's humility. We see this man that's anointed by God. And then despite everything that he saw, he still obeyed God. And so finally, he was anointed king and began, to stand before, and began to stand before God. And so as you look, through, look at David and his life and his, and his attachment, his pursuit of righteousness, one of the things that you get to see is that, you know, David wasn't perfect. And God still called him a man after his own heart. Pastor Rice spoke to this a moment ago. He said how women, we desire perfection. You know, just like I wanted my cakes in that Easy Bake Oven to be perfect. I was trying to set a perfect house with my little balloon furniture. You know, we have all these desires, not just for ourselves, but if you're a mom, you have these desires for your children. You have desires for your husband. You know, all of these things we're seeking, we're pursuing, and we want to be successful at all of this. But what is God saying to us about what he desires for us. And so one of the things that I noticed about myself is that as I've grown and I uh, experienced some things, God began to change the desires of my heart. And so while I was, uh, you know, I went, to, I went to college, so I was excited about going to college because I just wanted to make my parents proud. And then I should get married and because that's what you do. And then I should have children because that's what you're supposed to do. And in all of this, sometimes I found, I'm, I'm not afraid to admit, there were times I found myself setting my own agenda. And so I don't know if anybody else is ever guilty of that, but I found myself setting, setting my own agenda so that at times God wasn't really the object of my desire. You know, my own success was the object of my desire. And so I, when I was looking at... Um, um, I was reading further in the Old Testament, and I was looking at the book of Isaiah, one of my favorite scriptures when you'll read in Isaiah chapter 40, where Isaiah reminds us of who God is. God is the one that's able to guide and to protect, because he starts off with these words, and he says, has thou not known? 
Has I not heard that the everlasting God, the creator of the universe, that he fainteth not, neither is he weary. He's the one that gives power to the frank, and he increases their strength, and he gives, the, gives us might. And even though the young men, you shall fall, shall fall and faint and grow weary, but they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And I have, there were times in my life where I forgot that it was God was the one that was empowering me. And so I, 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 that humility that David showed, I wasn't necessarily showing that. And I'll be honest with you, probably when I was 20, I didn't even know what humility really was. Because I, you know, I tell my girls sometimes that if they had knew the person I was before I had Morgan, it was all about me. I mean, it was really all about me. And I'll tell you, what, I've told the women before about how, how uh, my mom hurt my feelings when she wrote me this letter and told me about how selfish I was. And then I had to, and I had to really look inside myself and begin to change. And so it started, I started looking at, you know, what is God desiring for me? You know, I've been walking with God a long time, but my steps haven't necessarily been ordered by him. I, I knew the word, but I hadn't necessarily applied the word. And so what I want to say to us today, especially as women that are seeking to be closer to God, to, to our mothers that have a, a, a heart to raise our children in a way that glorifies God, that knowledge without trust in God is futile and it doesn't mean anything at all and you know I know that as women we we have different you know we look at intimacy different than men and so we need to feel a closeness we need to feel we we need to feel that sense of connection and what I want to remind you of is that God is near and that uh and that uh, I, I was reminded as I was looking in uh was I was reading the story about uh Mary and Martha, when Jesus was at Lazarus' home, and uh, he was talking to them, and he, he was saying to uh, Martha, 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 you worry about so many things. And so I wonder how many of us are guilty of that. And so what my word of encouragement to you as I prepare to take my seat is that if you desire a greater intimacy with God, the first step is for us to begin to walk in humility and to walk in obedience. Because just like God was saying to Martha that day, he's saying to us, Felisa, 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 Toby, 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 Daphne, Daphne, Sonia. And he's saying Rachel and Ann, and he's calling all of us by name. He's calling Chandler and uh, Miss Deborah and Kendra. He's telling all of us, you worry about so many things, but I want you to desire the greater thing, and that's intimacy with me. Because as women, you know, we look for the great love story. You know, we want to, we're looking to be swept off our feet, but this is the great love story. That long before he laid down earth's foundation, he had us in mind. He had settled on us as the focus of his love to be made whole and holy by his love. Long, long ago, he decided to adopt us into his family through Jesus Christ and what pleasure he took in planning this. And he wanted us to enter into the celebration of his lavish gift giving by the hand of his beloved son. Because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, his blood poured out on the altar of the cross. We were a free people. How many people know it's nothing like being free? And you know, we're not just barely free. We're really free, abundantly free, because he thought of everything. He provided for everything we could possibly need, letting us in on his plans he took such delight in making. He set it all out before Christ, in us in Christ, a long-range plan in which everything would be brought together and summed up in him, everything in deepest heaven and everything on planet Earth. It's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had, to, he had his eye on us and his designs on us for glorious living, part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and everyone. 
So my encouragement to you is to reach out to the God who has so kindly reached out for us. And what you do is you desire him more, desire int intimacy with him, seek intimacy with him, achieve intimacy with him through humility and obedience. All righty, good, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for just this opportunity, Pastor and Sonia and the leaders of the church for just this opportunity to stand before you on this very special Mother's Day. I mean, Felisa, that was really good. Thank you so very, very much for sharing with us like you have. But I'd like to take just this opportunity to say a special thank you to those who I call other mothers. Those are those folks who didn't birth us, but they have poured into our lives. And I'll tell you why it's important to me and why it's significant to me. And it's because over 22 years ago, my mother died. And we know that um, that, that can be very, very uh, just detrimental to us emotionally. And there is nothing, this is something that uh, I'm the youngest of five children. I have two sisters. And uh, we agreed that after mama died that um, it was clear that there is nothing in life that prepares you to lose a mother. There is not intellect. It doesn't matter how sick they are. It doesn't matter what you might expect. Nothing prepares the heart for that. And so it was very devastating. Now, my mother, I learned a lot from her. She stood about 4'9", and I know y'all saying I'm not much taller than that, but I was taller than mama. She was 4'9", I'm 5'2", because that's what my driver's license says. But I learned um, watching her, I learned to serve others, and I learned to serve others well. And as I said, it was just really difficult when I lost mama. But then I began to recognize that um, and remember about growing up, you know, sometimes you don't always remember what your parents do for you. But my mother was like one of my biggest advocates. I remember in high school, I decided I wanted to go to college. Again, youngest of five children, first one to have ever gone to college. And I told my mom I wanted to go, and now, and she said, okay, right? The thing is that 95% of the time that, that I was with my mother, she was a stay-at-home mom. So how was she going to send me to school? Well, she worked with my daddy. Now my daddy said, now my job is to raise you until you get 18, and then it's time for you to get a job. And so my mother came alongside and was my biggest advocate, and I don't know what she worked out with daddy, but all I know is that they sent me to college and I was the first one to go. And I know it was because it was my mom. She came alongside, she took my dream, and she made it into something great. And it allowed me and propelled me to do a lot of things in my life. And so I am very thankful for that. Now, as I said, when my mother died, she actually had a lifestyle that included smoking. And so she smoked and she died from cancer. Now, as I said, I was emotionally devastated, but God, yeah. <laughs> let me say that again, because I like that, because but God, he had a plan for me and he has a plan for us. Jeremiah 29, 11 reminds us that he thinks about us and he has plans for us. And so 10 years before my mother died, my God put in place a relationship with Harice Fields. And I was a part of a sorority and they sent me to an internship in Chicago and I stayed with this older member of our sorority, Miss Fields. And he connected us. And for 10 years before my mother died, we grew in relationship. Now, I didn't know over the years what that was going to grow into, but God knew she's gonna have a need right here when her mother dies. And she had this, he had this relationship growing and it met that very need. And so I am thankful for Miss Fields because God knew what I needed. He provided what I needed long before I ever knew what I needed. And at that very low point in my life, he prepared her, she was like a salve to my hurts. So when I said on Mother's Day, I don't wanna go to church because you know they're gonna make all the people stand up and they're gonna give praises to their mother but i didn't have my mother any longer but miss fields would encourage me and help me through and help to uh, just nurture nurture my life and so i am thankful so thankful for her because she poured into my life because see i was mad at god y'all and i didn't know it at the time uh, my husband charles here is so loving and the, t the time after my mother died we had only been married a year 
we hadn't begun to have children yet. And for a little while, I didn't go to church. I just didn't get up <laughs> and we didn't go. And Charles so lovingly said, babe, are we gonna ever go back to church? <laughs> And, you know, it kind of, you know, sometimes you need a nudge like that. You know, you don't think that you've fallen into something. But he helped me to get back to the very people that were pouring into me. And I began to identify that there were other mothers that were also pouring into me in the congregation that we were a part of. See, God cares for me. And through the obedience of Miss Fields and other than the church, I was able to grow and get unstuck from that emotional time that I was going through. There were other people like Irene Howlton, I'm thinking of, and Audrey Washington, and Miss Washington and her husband used to keep the kids when they were little. I remember that uh, Katrina was actually in a baby carrier, and we took the kids over, and they were going to keep them for us. And it was one of those things where we left, Charles and I went on our little date, and I called, I think, one too many times, because Miss Washington said, now, Daphne, the kids are all right. You don't have to call anymore. <laughs> but go and en go enjoy your husband now that little small little thing right that put me in check but she did a couple of things she acknowledged that I had a, a, a concern about the kids right because it's kind of hard when they little you think you're the only one that can take care of them but she so kindly not only corrected that you don't have to worry about the kids but she also directed me she said go and enjoy your husband and that's exactly where, you know, she gently loving me and gently guiding me in that time. And so by the time we moved to Dallas, 2008 or so, I was real hip to God's plan, right? Because when we chose NEDC, I came here and I started looking for, I know we're going to have another mother for me, another mother, where is she, right? And I found, found several of them. Now, there's a sweet soul that my eyes landed on, and she's no longer with us, but it was Ms. Inez. That's the mom of Miss Bobby and the grandmother of Miss Sonia. And she was so sweet. She was such a blessing. Our family had an opportunity, just a couple opportunities for her to come to our home. And we began to love on her. Because, see, God pours things into us, and he allows people to affect our lives. And then we start reciprocating to other folks. And so she came to our home, and we were able to love on her. And at the time, Miss Bobby um, was full-time caregiver. So we gave her a little bit of time to herself, a little bit of opportunity opportunity to take care of herself, but then we were able to love on Miss Inez. And I know that, you know, that there is a lot of other mothers that continue to show up in my life. There's like, tell it like it is, Miss Bobby. She's the most transparent person I have ever known. She's going to tell you about her, and she's going to tell you about you as well. There's also Miss Ann. My goodness, this woman hugs me like she hadn't seen me in 20 years. I love it, Miss Ann. Miss Norma, I know you're back there. Oh my goodness, this lady has been serving all of her life, her family and others. And she, in our growth group, she shares with us how um, the Lord has just blessed her and how she's been able to serve other folks. She talks about opening up her home and opening up her kitchen so folks can come in and just see the love of Jesus. All of this, y'all, is just an opportunity for me to drink in and learn and grow in these relationships. And then, of course, there is Miss Pinnell now. She's not going to want me to mention her name because she likes to be, you know, behind the scenes. So I'm going to get in trouble behind this. But since I'm up here with all y'all, y'all going to protect me from Miss Pinnell, right? <laughs> <laughs> but this, she has blessed me so tremendously. I mean, her faith runs deep. If you've ever had a conversation with her, oh, my goodness. And I mean, it's just breathtaking. And she is just a grand role model for me. Here recently, Charles and I have been planning with our son and praying about what we should do regarding college. And I shared that with Miss Pinnell. And, and she started texting me little messages about trusting in God and having faith in God and making sure we're looking to him and his plan. And that's that's just been such an encouragement to us that not only um, is she praying with us and for us, she also has, and I'm going to ask you to pray for her too, she has rheumatoid arthritis as well, but she will text me and not just text me a little message and say, go see this scripture or that scripture. She takes the time and she puts the whole scripture in there. So I guess she said, you can't say I didn't tell you <laughs> that I didn't point you to where it is that you should be looking as you are trusting in God and letting him lead the way. So I'm thankful for all of you and for all the love that they've given to me. And these ladies um, and many others have just walked out Titus 2, 3 through 5. 
I mean, they, they, these attributes, God has really kind of made it clear for the older women to teach the younger women. And I'm just thankful for you, Jesus. Now, God makes it real clear that not only are the um, older women to teach the younger women, it also, the scripture also tells the older women how to be and how to behave and then what it is that they're to talk to the younger women about. Now, we might think, well, we're just going to get on the phone and we're going to, you know, we can complain a little bit and we can go on and on. But no, God has made it really clear. God's like that. It's like a no stone unturned type of God. So you don't have to guess, well, what is it that I'm supposed to talk about or what is it that I'm supposed to convey? He makes it very, very clear. Now, the older women, we are told to teach good things. We're told to teach the young women how to love their husbands, how to love their children, how to be discreet, how to be homemakers, how to be good. <laughs> I think that just capsulates it, everything. Just be good. And then to be obedient to their own husbands. Now, I do want you guys to pray for me because, I mean, I still am a work in progress. None of us has gotten there. Y'all haven't either, but I haven't either. And I just ask you to keep praying for me and keep helping me. And when, when you see me walking around here and you want to, you know, take a moment and just drop whatever it is that God has for you given to me to give to me. And I just ask you to do that. Um, I recall um, a couple of years ago, I was talking to a friend of mine and I was complaining. I mean, I was flat out complaining and, you know, I was right about this and, and I wanted them and they were like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. That sounds really good. And then when I get home, I get a, um, she told me to, she sent me a text, and this is what she said. She told me, Daphne, I was thinking about what you were sharing with me, and I think you need to go check out Psalms 139, 23 through 24. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. This is going to really hit home. This is really going to be about being on my side, right? And it says, search me, oh God, and know my heart. And I almost couldn't read the rest of it because then it fell on wicked, then it fell on wicked ways in me. And I was like, wait a minute, she must not have really truly understood what it is that I said to her about this situation. You know, but this is this is what good godly women do, right? Right? She listened to me and she let me go on and on. But what she did was she pointed me to the word of God. And that's what we are all called to do, is to point one another to the word of God. Because it's easy to get caught up in the in the circumstances that somebody shares and we may have an opinion about it. But what we need to do and we should do and what we owe it to one another is to point one another to the scriptures. So, of course, I was taken aback, and I was complaining, and she sent me to the Word, and so it shut me up in a good way. And that's what other mothers do. They pour into the lives of others. They love on us, and they teach us the Word of God. And for those of you who are searching the Scriptures for examples of this, because some of us, we have to go further and further into it to really get it, think about Naomi and Ruth in Scripture, right? They both lost their, their husbands, and, and Ruth could have gone on to be back with her people. And Naomi said, matter of fact, go ahead with your people. I'm going to go with mine. And Ruth said, I'm going with you. And you know what Ruth got out of this? She got Boaz. And Boaz was a righteous man, and he was rich, too. <laughs> And, and in addition to this, which is better than all of that, is that they were in the lineage of Christ Jesus. Now, just think if she had gone on on her own, right? Elizabeth to Mary, and you remember the story, and you know all about it. And when um, Mary went to visit Elizabeth, they were both carrying miracles. I mean, the scripture doesn't talk about their day-to-day -day interactions, but it's got to be good. It's got to be good. So these are just some of the examples here. So, I mean, I just really want to encourage all the other mothers, those who stand in the gap and who take seriously the opportunity to pour into the life of others. So never be too busy. Take just a moment. Sometimes it's just a hug that somebody needs that'll make the difference. You know, if God gives you a word and he tells you to call up somebody, take a moment and do that, you never ever know exactly what impact you're going to have on the life of that mother and then that mother on another mother and that mother on another mother. So I'm just going to encourage you to do that, to continue to pour into the lives of others. Um, I love you all. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your Mother's Day.